around Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the Cube covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of KubeCon 2018. Part of the CNCF Cloud Native Compute Foundation, part of the Linux Foundation. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, your co-host with Lauren Cooney, uh, founder of Spark Labs, helping me out as analyst this week. Great, great to have our next guest, shared acquaintance, Abby Curran, Executive Director of Cloud Foundry Foundation, CUBE alumni, uh, welcome back. Thanks for having me back again. Got your voice, you're losing your voice uh, from all the talking you're doing here on Cloud Foundry. Cloud, 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 all the time. So we were talking yesterday, I want to get you, get you on because you guys have done some research on, yeah. on cloud and we were chatting about, I actually gave you a plug on the opening segment yesterday, um, about some of the things you're finding about Kubernetes. Certainly in our bubble, it's so passe now, we're moving on to Istio and Kubeflow. But you have research that, you know, it's mainstream tech outside of the bubble we live in um, is actually now evolving into the first inning of Kubernetes, if you will. Exactly. What's the research say? What's it what's all about? Well, the research says, and we've been trying, I'll apologize already, my voice is all over the place. So we've been tracking containers for now almost three years. And I remember three years ago, everyone's like, okay, well, we've talked about Docker for years now, it's so passe. But when you got beyond the, the bubbles where tech is, people were like, just starting to think about it. And so containers are just now getting where people are either using them or using them in proof of concepts. Um, but Kubernetes has become a really big part of the conversation the last year and has continued to take it by storm. And so we're starting to see organizations that are interested in it, but in terms of adoption and awareness beyond just the core central, there's still a massive education gap there and, and a really big opportunity to educate people, not only on these tools, but what they really want to know is how do these tools help them get through their day and accomplish their work. So essentially there's a lag of sequence of early adopters, fast followers, and now mainstream. Mainstream are getting accustomed to containers, now hitting up on Kubernetes. Yeah. We're still, we're pushing the front lines on Well Istio. I think, you know, we are. And I think this is one of my observations as well, Abby, is that, you know, we, we look at these, these technologies, right? And, and I'm in the hallways and I'm talking to folks in the cab line and things along those lines and they're just, they're here to actually learn about the technology, about Kubernetes. They actually don't understand it fully yet and they're trying to figure out really what to do with it and their companies have sent them here. And then it's, you know, you talk to the folks that are, you know, kind of, you know, we're here for the long haul and we're there at the beginning of CNCF and things along those lines and they're like, oh yeah, it's everyone's adopted it, right? So you've got these two spectrums, and I think, you know, my question to you is, is what do you think is needed for this to really cross the chasm? Well, I'll actually answer that with another piece of data. One of, um, we do a global research, and one of the things we found, we ask about what are your priorities for the next couple of years? And resoundingly, across every persona, so developers, operators, IT decision makers, executives, their top three priorities for the next two years is continuous delivery. So let's think about that. Continuous delivery for me is a priority. Building that culture change is a priority. And so the tech is there to supplement that. But the real work, the hard work is a priority and I think that's exactly where it should be. So as these organizations really implement that continuous delivery methodology, they're going to pull these technologies in to supplement that. So it's not a technology problem, it's a people problem. Yes. But your point is, to the industry, let's be realistic. Yeah. And understand the segments that are adopting at what pace, matching education or evangelism or transformation at the right, at the right piece of the journey. Yeah, I mean all of this tech, even Cloud Foundry is a supplemental tool. Yeah. The hard work is really continuous delivery, building in that culture change, making software a core part of your business, making technology part of your day-to-day -day conversation and that heavy lift has to come in order for these any of these technologies to be successful. You guys done a great job. I want to just say Cloud Foundry, I want to give you some props. Congratulations on the work you've done. Thank Take you. a minute to talk about some of the success. You're an ingredient in a lot of successful um, applications out there. What are some of the stats? How many people push it, are using Cloud Foundry? What are some of the, what's some of the uptake? What, share some of the numbers of the performance with Cloud Foundry. Well, I mean, we're in use of over half the Fortune 500 across every industry. What's, it's been 
so phenomenal and so awesome about Cloud Foundry, and we really saw this at Summit, is all the industries that are using this to change. But what was interesting about our last summit, which we just had a couple of weeks ago, is all of these companies wanted to get on stage and not talk about the tech. They want to talk about the culture change. You know, hearing Boeing get on stage and say, actually, you know what the real work is, is the transformation we had to undergo in order to do this work. And to hear that over and over again. And, and it's so awesome to be part of that change because technology needs to be there to supplement that change and be part of that. But it's really great to see this come into fruition, like hearing the stories from Home Depot and Comcast and US Air Force and how it's fundamentally changing their businesses and helping them get apps out the door at scale. I mean, that's really where the cool stuff happens. Yeah, great success there. And a lot of end users too. It's not like a bunch of one-offs. No. So how was the summit last week in Boston? It was amazing. We had um, you know, half of our attendees at our summit are end users. And you know the big high I get is like hearing everyone talk about what they're doing, and this is what I did, and and stuff you've never heard of, like oh I didn't know that you were using it, and oh that's a really great way to use it in very inventive ways, and so it really just refreshes you, like oh this is what matters, the users and how they're using it and what they're going to do with the tech. I mean, isn't that why we're all here, right? Yeah. It's and it's great, and they're creating such amazing technologies that it gets. It makes you energized about yeah, what's going on. Yeah, and I think it's, it's amazing to me, because I was actually at the Cloud Foundry Summit as well, and I, there was one customer, I can't remember the name, that got on stage and there was they were using like, they had like 2,100 end users or something like that, developers, their company actually using Cloud Foundry. And it was really, I think that was the number, and I think it was really tremendous to see how many people inside of one company are actually using the technology across the board. It was really it, great. That's, I mean, this is all about, I mean, we're in a modern software era, and this is a whole new guard coming on board, and it's a whole new architecture. And it's a whole new way of thinking about it. Like, you know, right now, we talk about how tech, and there's a gap, and we're pushing the tech, and people are going to get there. But it, it's not going to be too long before the enterprises are pushing back, saying, hey, this is what I need. Here's where I am. I'm running at a scale you didn't think about yet. You know, we're running, you know, we have a lot of users that are running you know, tens of thousands and thousands of applications. What about when they're in the hundreds of thousands of applications and what does that look yeah. like? And they're like saying, well, I'm going to do this and here's what I need to yeah. do. And, and there'll be a lot of microservices. Abby, I got to ask you to end, end the segment. Thanks for coming on. I know you were rushed to come on. Appreciate you taking the time. It's Always super busy. happy to do that. What's your priorities for next year? Obviously, you got a lot of successes under your belt. What's next? What, uh, what are you going to check off the, the list this year? Well, interoperability is a big theme for me this year. And what does that mean? That means building bridges to other technologies and other projects, like the amazing work that's happening in CNCF and all of those great technologies. So making sure that when those technologies mature, how do we bring those to the enterprise? And um, then really continuing to work on our ecosystem and work with our members and, and to really get more contributors around the table. Awesome, developers and contributors, Dev Plus contribute. Thanks for coming on My and contributing Thanks, Abby. your insight. And you know, I know you got the voice going. We appreciate you taking the time. It's the Cube Conversations here in the Cube at in, in uh, Denmark for KubeCon 2018, part of CNCF. I'm John Furrier with Laura Cooney. Be right back after this short break. Ah.